Away from politics now, the federal government has directed the immediate closure of the Ijarao Lockbad Bridge following the discovery that some miscreants have tampered with the major reinforcement elements of the deck from underneath, which led to the failure of a section of the bridge along Ijarao Lockbad Road beside Water Corporation. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babachinde Fashola, in a statement signed by his Special Advisor on Communications, Mr. Hakim Bilu, identified the failed section as the Ijero Lokba Inward Ijero Luya Pakwa Road. Our correspondent, Sarah Yeku, is standing by to help us understand the effect on people and businesses around that axis. Sarah, uh, Quickly bring us up to speed with what we, what more we know about this uh, road now and how it has impacted persons, uh, motorists, uh, businesses around that access. Uh, so just before I tell you a bit about the road, let me just give you a sense of what's going on here. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, this uh, Keke and uh, Pep, this vehicle, you know, was just stuck uh, just a couple of min minutes back. And as you can see that it's trying to navigate and find its way out to the other side of the road. Uh, this is um, Ijara. Uh, road. This this road takes you to um, Apa, takes you to Ijarabadia, takes you to Ajegunle, and um, that's and this is just um, the Igomo area. This is where you have the national theatre, so Igomo area. So that's the one of the difficulties commuters, particularly commercial bus drivers, are going through this morning because of the closure of this road. So let me now take you back to the section that failed on this particular road. Uh, if you take a look at the section that failed, uh, you see that um, this happened this happened on Tuesday and um, the federal government had ordered a closure of the road because of the impact. This is where the failed section is along this route. And so when this happened on Tuesday, the federal government, as of true, the Ministry of Works had ordered the closure of this road. And they had also this morning, so we saw them bring the crash barriers uh, crash barriers to ensure that commuters do not still flout the law and uh, you know jeopardize their own safety so what they are advising now is that for commuters who want to use this road because this is a major route major access route for those going to Apapa which where we have the port for those going to Ijara for those going to um, Ajegunle and so for commuters they are advising that you take the alternative routes uh, let me just read uh, from the statement which says that um, for those coming from a core bridge motorists can use uh, the Igomu Sifax to Ijara, Oloi, and then connect to Apapa. For for those coming from uh, Ido, they can use Ijara to Ijara Olokpa. They can use um, the intersection on the pass at Ijara Olokpa, then reconnect at the U-turn to actually uh, access Apapa and Ijara Oloi. And that's like the difficulty we've seen this morning. Before we could access this particular point, Veronica, it was pretty difficult. We had to try and maneuver to use some routes that naturally commercial bus drivers would not have, wouldn't have access to. And that's how we were able to get to this point. Uh, but from the explanation of the federal government, they had said that vandals are at work. But you can imagine the question now is, Veronica, how did vandals get under this deck on pile because that's the example of this kind of bridge they call it a deck on pile a bridge which means that it it, it does not need piers to hold but the question is how did vandals go under this deck on pile to remove some of the reinforcements holding this bridge as you know that this bridge has been in existence for years for decades dating back to the 1970s and it brings to question you know what um, and the Federal Ministry of Work had always talked about, which is illegal shanties on the bridges, the work of vandals destroying the infrastructure, particularly the road infrastructure that we have in Lagos. Veronica. Right. Sir, that is one big question I was going to ask. How this uh, miscreants, as uh, the government puts it, were able to get to the reinforcement to take out some of those things there. But quickly talk to us. Uh, the shanties, are there still shanties underneath the bridge? What is the story you are hearing with regards to activities of miscreants around that axis? So um, if we're just going to take you through some of, so that you can better see. For safety reasons, we may not be able to go too close to this particular section, but I would just try and give you a picture of what it looks like inside 
um, inside this on the on the deck on pile, uh, so that you see that there is actually space for some vandals, people that are criminally minded, to actually exploit this section. So that's the field section you see there on this road. And so the explanation that they had given is that they had burnt under the bridge um, from the investigations they have uh, conducted so far that the vandals burnt under the bridge and then they tried removing some things and then that's why you have this field section. But around the bridge, around this road, you would see some holes where people can actually go through. But the question is, what in the world are you looking for under the bridge? And we've seen over and over again the Ministry of Work talk about how Nigerians are expected to take ownership of the road infrastructure that they're building because this is a road that has been in existence for decades and so it brings to question why this would happen now when there are a lot of construction work ongoing in Lagos. The Lagos Ibarra Expressway road project is there. The Akpongwa Bridge is there, which has been closed for, that, that's the Akpongwa section of the Eko Bridge has been closed for over a year now and that particular closure is leading to the traffic that we had seen on this road before this incident happened. So some commuters and some uh, uh, persons we have spoken with around this area had said that um, actually, apart from the story of the vandals vandalizing this infrastructure, the problem is the vehicular activities ongoing on this road. So you have trailers, articulated vehicles parked here for days and that pressure could actually be the cause of this field section. And that's the explanation people around here are given, that the closure on the Akpongwa section of the um, Eco Bridge and also and some other places that construction work is ongoing, and that led to the pressure that we saw on this section of the road, which is the road leading to right. Apapa Port. So you can imagine, uh, we've seen a lot of people walk distances this morning just to get to their places of work. Absolutely. We saw some persons uh, walking the distance earlier on. but. Uh, Thank you, Sarah, for bringing us up to speed. We'll definitely keep taps uh, with you with regards to developments coming out of uh, that section of the Ijero Lokba.